The 6.5 is live and on the road in New York City for Cloudera Evolve 2023. We're talking about some of our favorite topics, a lot of AI, a lot of generative AI, and data, because we all know that you have to get your data estate in order before you can do any of these incredible tricks with analytics, AI, and now generative AI. Dan, it's been a great show. It has been a great show. It's been good to spend the day here. We're looking over the beautiful Hudson yes. here in New York City, but more importantly, we've had the chance to hear from not only the Cloudera executives, uh, we've been hearing from customers, we've been hearing from partners, and uh, I think what I can say confidently, Pat, is that I'm going to be able to walk away today with a much clearer understanding of what Cloudera is doing. Having said that, I sure do like the opportunity to ask, and so, Maybe we save the best conversation for the last conversation, although maybe everyone out there is watching them in different orders. But uh, what do you think? So with that, let's introduce the CEO of Cloudera. Charles, welcome back to the 6.5. Thank you, thank you. Who are you guys talking to after me? Gosh, we have talked to, it depends on how well, people watch. Well, if the best, is next, the best is yet to come, I'm just curious who's next. It's you. Uh, then you well, are, I appreciate that. You are that. You know, we have <laughs> talked to uh, your product leaders. Yep. We have talked to your customer leaders. We have talked to your partners. We talked to AWS. So it has been a, a, a great so far, and we thought the best for last, and that's you. Well, I appreciate you saying so. I might disagree with you, but <laughs> nevertheless, I mean, look, this, this event has, has been about more than cloud era, people talking more about customers telling their stories of what they've done with the technology. Right. You know, I'm still relative, I still count as the new guy. I'm still relatively new to the company. So what was so uh, kind of empowering or exciting for me is hearing what some amazing companies, brands whose names you recognize, yes. are doing with our products. Uh, and, and you think there are two or three, now there was a room full. So, you know, all in just a, a great event and we're super happy to have pulled this off and, and pulled it off in a way that I think is a first class event. So thank you guys for coming. Yeah, we appreciate being part of it too. This is our second year in a row, so. Yeah, and I love the humility. The the dad joke, the, it's not me best for last. It sounds like something No, it's I would, definitely true, I'm not the best. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so you made a, you know, by the way, first big keynote, right? Since, yes. Uh, yes. Other than internal, the first yes. big external. Correct. So always a seminal moment in terms of any CEO's tenure, but also in a company that's in such a, a state of transition. Mm -hmm. You've come in, you've, you've made some important changes. Mm -hmm. um, you've put your vision out there, and you actually did it with us, which was really appreciated. appreciated. But having said that, you kind of made a comment of the next wave of generative AI yes. runs on Cloudera. Now, there's no shortage of companies right now talking about how they're going to be the driver of generative AI. So mm -hmm. let's put you on the spot here, Charles, and say, yep. what do you mean, and how is Cloudera going to drive this wave? Well, say, so key to our view of how the world's going to evolve, and this is informed by customer conversations, not just us, um, we believe that the world's going to evolve to a hybrid data infrastructure that powers AI applications. Um, what does that mean? AI grew up in the cloud, right? You had these large language models that fed on a whole bunch of mostly publicly available data, and they do amazing things. Uh, I'm a big fan of, of ChatGPT, and I, I, I said during the presentation, I actually used it uh, to create a first draft of the letter I sent to the company when I joined Cloudera. Uh, and it got some things wrong uh, in terms of where our headquarters was, yeah. and I fixed that. But, but the point to, that we're trying to make is the next generation is going to incorporate both that cloud-based data, but really more tuning models with your own data because you get better data, better business outcomes, better, better results from the models. And we believe that we're the only company that's thinking about the magnitude and complexity of the challenge you're bringing together across on-prem, private cloud, and public cloud, uh, the ability to manage workloads and pull data together from all of those environments and bring it into one open data lake uh, and again, you heard a lot about Iceberg today, uh, powered in many cases by Iceberg. Right. That's a unique capability, and our belief is that those higher level value added applications, not just a, you know, the nifty parlor trick of what chat GPT does when you or I log in, that's the next generation. And so embedded in that comment is the importance of hybrid, um, the importance of cloud-based technologies which are necessary but not sufficient, uh, and then our commitment to working with, with open standards and open open source products as they become available 
so we make the best technology available to our customers. So, you're in a great position, I think, and I thought you were in a great position with ML, but when it comes to generative AI, there are certain things that, that do change. I mean, you have 25 exabytes mm -hmm. uh, of data under management that you talked about today, and that, that is, is absolutely mind-blowing. Most people talk about petabytes, right. and you're talking about exabytes. And the other thing is that this is mostly today on-premises uh, in the data center mm -hmm. uh, type of information, maybe some is on the edge. Uh, yet sometimes we think about, hey, the only place you can do any of this uh, is, is, is in the public cloud. You had customers who uh, were on stage who talked about using a hybrid data architecture, data architecture, and morphing that into a hybrid AI implementation. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, can you talk uh, about uh, some examples of that and this next generation yeah. um, generative AI? The first part that I wanted to address is just the idea of the importance of mixing on-premises with cloud-based data. We're seeing customers do that for a number of reasons. Right. Some of them are, are security, manageability, um, also cost. Uh, one of the coolest examples I've seen uh, is a pharmaceutical uh, development firm, and they have embedded in their on-premises uh, data infrastructure 30 years of clinical trials data. Spread across a dozen geographies, lots of languages, they have, they have uh, some rows and table format data, uh, some unstructured data, they've got research papers written in multiple languages. Right. They've basically loaded that into a data lake. They've indexed it such that now they can tie a specific organic compound to an impact on a specific gene. So they know that this compound does this to this gene. They know these genes are, are, are operative in some orphan diseases. Diseases that they will never fund a research project for because there's no money in doing right. that. And what they've been able to do with this, with this structure is to lay that across their data and surface up hundreds of thousands of potential compounds that could then have an impact on a specific gene, which for an orphan disease, which is driven by this gene, right. ultimately could have an impact. And they've narrowed that down to the point where they've entered, um, it's not a clinical trial, it's an approved test of existing drugs that have been tested on humans that work on a certain gene that they're using to try to address some of these orphan, orphan diseases to be super dramatic. Uh, in that case, the technology is potentially saving lives. Right. But moreover, I think it's a super cool use case of data that existed, finding new ways to do it in ways that are highly valued, and you couldn't do it without one, the hybrid architecture that we enable, and two, the data engineering that's required, right. the, building, the, the rough and tough work of building that foundation to allow them to do that. It's, it's one of my favorite use cases. Yeah. And cool. it sounds like it's something that only can be done with generative AI, because I think of machine learning and the capabilities, it's the multivariate uh, and the model complexity that generative AI brings to the, brings to the table here? Exactly, that's, okay. that's what I've been told. It's really interesting because the hybrid architecture sometimes gets underplayed, mm -hmm. but the data estate of most enterprises has, you know, you talk about this a lot, probably even more than I do, but the vast majority of the data is on-prem, and it's being mm -hmm. created every day, every minute at the edge, of course in the cloud on-prem data center, and what Cloudera is really trying to do is solve that problem, and, I, and I've been very positive on how you've been doing this with adding the vector and the unstructured, because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people knew that if you just had rows and, rows and columns and tables, databases have been really good at that for a long time, mm -hmm. but this unstructured is what's being created, video, this. Right. You know, someday you could have this conversation, you have your important meetings, you want to be able to index that, you want to be able to use that and be able to generate with that. That's very hard. And when a lot of that data is not sitting in there in the cloud, that becomes really complicated. So you kind of started talking about the question I was going to ask you. So, you know, th th there are hurdles. There's a lot of reasons that this is hard. Mm -hmm. Talk about what kind of the, the limiting, what are the gating factors to getting this done and how are you helping the companies overcome that? Well, um, I think we're very early in the innings of, of people using data they, they have in their on-prem or cloud-based systems and moving that toward generative AI. I think right now we have lots of, of fun things to look at, but not that many tangible use cases where people can say, I've got business value. Right. And the problem is it's expensive. So it's expensive to feed data into a large language model for a long period of time, whether you're using you know, a, a public cloud or your own on-premises right. infrastructure. 
and so I think one of the one of the several limiting factors right now is cost. Um, the second thing is while uh, boards are saying we need to use AI to run our business better, what are you doing? From a management team's perspective, CEOs are saying, well, we have some cool ideas, but we're not sure which are the early quick wins that we can go get, right. which from a management team's perspective will validate further investment. So right now in this, in this formative stage where I think people are excited, but we don't have as much kind of tangible progress, which is why I think this event was so cool, because we had a bunch of customers who were talking about things they've already done. I would argue there was as much real business value communicated by our customers today as any event that's happened in the industry that's trying to talk about the progress of AI. And so that's why you know, I, I wasn't a part of this um, when it happened, but I, you can't help but be proud of the work that our customers and our team has done to get to this point. Yeah, I, I've really enjoyed the event. If nothing else, uh, getting more specifics on how you're enabling your customers to do all these great things with, with AI uh, and, and generative AI and bring in a bunch of new partners to, to help you do that. Names that I know you'd worked it, uh, with in the past, but uh, it seemed to me much, uh, much bigger uh, agreements uh, with them, right? Yes. The pine cones, the AWSs, uh, and, and the NVIDIA really becoming more of a fabric part of the solution. So that was today, and I know the work always continues, but uh, I wondered if you could give uh, our viewers, our listeners, uh, an idea of what to expect uh, in the future uh, for Cloudera. And you know, I don't want to limit you or bracket you, but you know, whether it's investments, whether mm -hmm. it's capabilities, yep. Uh, not, that, that you're thinking about right now. We're not now. public anymore, so you can give us all I say whatever I want, <laughs> exactly. There's no, there's no shareholder concern, and half our shareholders were in the room today, so I'm fine. No, um, so, you know, it's a, re it's a really good question, and, and maybe taking a big step back, I was, I was asked by the investors and brought in to help the company realize its opportunity, accelerate growth, and right. I think you saw today, we have a great collection of building blocks, yes. right? Technology, customer use cases, partners, our challenge is, is optimizing or realizing that opportunity. Uh, the things that we have done since, since we, we joined and, and have gone through kind of an investment cycle, we've accelerated a bunch of investment primarily around technology and go to market. Uh, I do think that one of the reasons why you saw the level of, first of all, the scale of customers you saw on the right. level was because you know, people figured out, my goodness, the company has 100 times more data under management than other companies in this space. And if that data under management is the precursor to building generative AI, then we need to work more closely with Cloudera. Right. I've actually had that conversation with a number of, of companies you saw on the stage today. Right. Um, we're also making the investments around um, accelerating some of our work around Iceberg, um, accelerating some work uh, around our ability to work with the large, uh, both open source and private models. Right. And all those things are um, expensive and time consuming but I think what's great is we have a group of investors that are willing to fund those investments. They're going to pay off not in a week or a month or a quarter, but in one year or two years. So I think right. we've been able to really accelerate a bunch of investment around our products and around our go-to-market. And the other thing we've done is we've started to increase our, our investments in branding. Uh, right. So you'll start to see from us primarily web-based um, uh, branding and marketing, which is something we haven't done in years. Right. And I think that the company, the market opportunity situation, we're in merits those investments, and so we're making them. Excellent. That's yeah, good, and we are obviously been following this for a long time, Charles, and this is a big moment, and I think you know, getting it right here could create real tailwinds for the company. I think these companies are starting to realize the amount of complexity, and having you know, organizations like NVIDIA and AWS stepping up and kind mm -hmm. of walking in, holding hands, saying side by side, we believe in what Cloudera is doing, and they can help you to solve your biggest data complexities, in order to drive generative AI capabilities into your organization. Those were, those were very positive outcomes from today's Evolve event. Yeah, we feel the same way. Thank you for saying that. You know, I think the challenge is, one of the things that we do well is help customers solve their most complex problems. It's not always the best thing to accelerate your business if you start talking right. about how complicated what you do is. And so we're trying to find the middle ground of, there's hard work to do here, we're spending money and engineering effort to make it easier, but, but to your point, um, data engineering at its core is some difficult blocking and tackling, 
you have to do that work to optimize your success in AI. And I think now people are starting to realize that that's the work they have to do to a good, do a good job in the long term, or at least we're hopeful that's the trend we're starting to see. Well, it seems like you're on the right path. And Charles, I want to thank you so much for joining Patrick and I here on the 6.5. Thank you guys for taking the time. We appreciate it. Let's do it again soon. Absolutely. All right, everybody, you heard it here. Charles Sansbury, CEO, Cloudera, joining us here on the 6.5 on the road at their Evolve 2023 event in New York City. Hit that subscribe button. Check out all the content that we created here at the event. And of course, all the interviews on the 6.5. For this episode, for Patrick Moorhead and myself, Signing out. See y'all later.